So of course it's really interesting, the tree that I've picked out today is the linden and another name for that is the lime tree. And I've been doing a little bit of a health reset recently, like a pre-spring clean if you like. I always feel like shifting and resetting and decluttering a little bit before the spring actually starts. And so I've been enjoying lots and lots of limes. And normally I'm a lemon person, but I've really got into the limes. So I've also picked the buffalo today. And the first thing it says about the buffalo spirit is about the abundant universe will provide, reminding you about the amazing manifesting power of gratitude. And I've kind of plotted and planned out a little journaling activity for myself this morning, all about gratitude. So no surprises there. And I thought I'd share with you what I do in my journaling session, because I often get asked, what shall I do in my journal? What shall I write in my journal? I don't know where to start and things like that. And even if we journal all the time, I think we can still get stuck sometimes, can't we, with, oh, where do I start today? Because obviously every new session is a new beginning and it can feel a little bit overwhelming to be confronted by those blank pages, can't it? So one of my patrons asked me a really interesting question for the Q&A in there last week and it was what shall I write in my journal I'm sick of writing I don't know what to write I don't know what to write and that comes from um, Julia Cameron's morning pages doesn't it where it's that stream of consciousness writing isn't it and you just write out what's in your mind and if you don't know what to write you just write out I don't know what to write I don't know what to write until you do know what to write that works for a lot of people but in all honesty, I haven't found it that useful for myself. And so I need to have other ways into my writing to make it useful for me. I'm not dissing the other way. Julia Cameron's book is absolutely wonderful and there's loads of gems in there. So if you've not read that, I recommend it. But I think it's called The Artist's Way, isn't it? And I haven't got a copy anymore because we sold all our books when we ran away in our van several years ago. But I do like to do a few different things in my journal to get me going. And I like to combine quite a few different things as well together in my journal pages. So for example, today, a mix of the gratitude pages mixed with pulling some oracle cards and seeing how that fits in with everything and also the element of storytelling so it's kind of like allowing everything to unfold like a story in my journal if that makes sense but that it's useful for me as well so let's have a look at this linden tree lime tree then it's cute there's a little bug on the leaf and this is uh, the, I'll just show you which oracle it is, it's the James Struthers Inspirational Cards for Wisdom and Guidance, The Wisdom of Trees, it's that one. James got it for me for Christmas. And it says here, look at my heart-shaped leaves if, if you want to understand my affectionate message to you. Try to send out a sense of love and peace wherever you are in the world, regardless of your inner circumstances. Lindens are also known as lime trees. All parts of the tree are valuable, from the inner bark, once used to make rope, to the fragrant flowers, which are an important food for bumblebees. In ancient times, a linden marked the site of a local court of law. In Greek mythology, Philera, the mother of the centaur Chiron, was transformed into a linden tree. In Norse and Germanic legend, the linden was the sacred tree of Frigga, the mother goddess, and Freya, the mistress of the earth. A tea made from the flowers calms the nerves and soothes digestive problems. So I got the card the right way up, and if you get it upside down, it has a different meaning. But this way up, it says, you are finding life too hectic and demanding. Mm -hmm. Look for opportunities to be peaceful and quiet each day, even if you can only snatch a minute or two here and there. Go outside and appreciate the beauty you find around you. So all of that speaking to me, to be fair, particularly the part where it says finding life too hectic and demanding. I had a really hectic day yesterday and 
yeah, ended up feeling quite grumpy about everything. And that sort of fed into today a little bit as well. Go and snatch a minute or two and go outside and appreciate. So again, the gratitude's coming in, which is also from this card. The journaling that I'd planned today is basically using photographs in our journal. And for the past few weeks, I've been checking out some of my older photos, but from kind of, you know, the last couple of years. So life just before the lockdowns and then during the, the lockdowns. And I've been looking out for things, key moments of transition, of gratitude. And I just pulled out those photographs and I've just printed them out on computer printer paper. So nothing fancy, just wanted the image to use in my journal. I've also picked a picture of me when I was really little to kind of begin the timeline if you like. And I'm not really sure which ones I'm going to actually use. Um, I've got me and James on the beach. I've got a real selection in here. And if you want to start your pages with, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to write, I'm not criticising that at all. You go ahead, get your wrist and, and the fine motor skills going and the wrist to brain action and all that good stuff. Get a nice pen ready and yeah, go with your own flow, definitely. But um, this is what I do. This is what I do, basically. So I'm going to look for some photographs which really sort of spark that gratitude um part in me yeah work on it from there sort of whatever story wants to come out from from that prompt if you like so i'm using my storytelling but i need a prompt for that and it could be a memory or something that happened yesterday or something that you're trying to process so maybe something that happened to you that you know you you, you need to process something negative perhaps so you're looking for the lessons maybe retelling it in a more positive way or maybe if you've kind of messed up like we all do because we're all human you kind of retelling that story if you like in a in a way of you know what would you do better next time and that kind of thing so instead of beating yourself up you're actually moving your way through it moving your way forwards if you like and of course there is neuroscience out there if you want to look for it which talks about the whole benefits of gratitude and how it affects your mental health. So it's psychological and it's physical. So it's good for the immune system and things like that. So it's a real miracle practice. You know, life's so hard and everything's so hard and um, all the doom and gloom stuff. You know, how is grat feeling gratitude going to help process emotions? You know, even really strong, difficult emotions like grief, for example. There's a really good website, and I'll leave a link down below, but I really like, it's called positivepsychology.com. And um, there's an article on there on the neuroscience of, of, of gratitude, of the practice of it. And so, you know, even just on the physical side where it's quoting some scientific research, it's talking about stronger immune systems, less body pains, optimum blood pressure, better cardiac function and sleep cycles. So that's definitely something I've been looking at, <laughs> my sleep. There's even one research paper here that describes gratitude as the healthiest of all human emotions. So, and of course it creates new neural pathways within our brains because it's fi firing neurons all the time and increasing dopamine and serotonin. So yeah, it's really interesting. Anyway, even if you don't look up any of that, just the act of doing some gratitude practices, maybe you don't use photographs, maybe you're just writing, or maybe you join in on my weekly Instagram gratitude practice where we all write three things in the comments and then we can read each other's and it's really uplifting and yeah I love that so I'll put my um, Instagram up there and you can check that out so you don't need to look into the science you'll just notice that you feel better definitely it will affect your brain definitely it helps process toxic emotions as well so it's really good for getting you know when you get into that sort of really negative cycle and you're into a downward spiral it can stop that and then help process and release those emotions so i think one of the things that's really quite interesting and 
really easy because you you, would, you don't need to think about it is actually pulling out going through you know your collection of photographs and pulling out without thinking too much the pictures that are speaking to you in in that moment and I've had a couple of sessions you know going through photos where last night and this morning I kind of yeah picked these ones out and um, I just kind of favorited them and then obviously today I've just printed them out on um, computer printer paper and so now I've cut them out and I've kind of grouped them if you like and I'll explain how I've grouped them really briefly so these two at the top are their moments where I'm pondering on something um, so it's kind of a crossroads if you like uh, you know those moments where you can pinpoint um, a decision-making process or the world opening up or something like that you know do I go through the gate or do I stay this side of the gate and that kind of thing so those two were key moments like that so I pulled those out and then to begin the story I've kind of picked little girl Wendy if you like which kind of makes sense at the beginning chronologically and also this picture which is gratitude that speaks gratitude to me um, standing in my studio in the window and just being so so grateful for so many things in that moment and, and remembering how I felt in that moment and then I've kind of got two separate categories here so this is this was before lockdown going into the forest and really getting some energy when I was feeling really low energy I was quite anemic and yeah I'd been struggling a little bit with my physical energy and so therefore emotional and psychological energy as well and James took me to this lovely forest and I wrapped up really warm and I got some energy back you know from those lovely trees and being out in nature and then this is during lockdown and we went to a beach last summer and so things were open opened up a little bit but we were still in the middle of the whole apocalyptic feel of everything if you like and yeah so it was getting that energy and that feeling back that I'd had so easily and taken for granted before the world went crazy if you like so those photos were quite uh, meaningful as well in that sense and then the last photos I've put in a timeline and they're all to do with my studio so starting this end then this is where I was you know working from home because it was lockdown one here in England and you had to work at home and so I brought a few bits and bobs home and set up a, a corner of my spare room as my studio um, it looks much nicer than it was actually that sort of end was that was the lovely end but it was quite cramped and I felt quite closed in um, in, in that space but I made it work I made it work and then moving back into my studio space after the first lockdown and then moving into sort of lockdown two where we were where we were able to go back into our work environment so not needing to work from home but um, so that was a bit of a weird time for me as well in there trying to settle and work out how I felt about everything because it felt really weird coming back to the studio after months and months and months, if you know what I mean. And then the journey of, you know, letting that studio go and being given the opportunity to have the room I've got now, private space, which really helped me with um, having a quiet work environment because this, this was great. I'd been in here for, for three years. It was a fantastic space, but it was communal. So it was quite difficult for me sometimes with the noise levels in there. And so having my own room here really opened um, my creative doors for me if you like in in the most wonderful ways of having this time and space to contemplate yeah like it's saying in on, on the Linden reading where it's saying you know look for opportunities to be peaceful and quiet each day and yeah having this space meant that I could really do that and um, preempting the creative process as well and so jumping in and having creative time in here so those photos are from you know feeling really great in here and creating in here so overall it's a lot about my experience of the last couple of years with the the world going a bit crazy a lot crazy and also the process of my um, creative space in each scenario you know finding my happy place so that I can actually create and remembering this little girl you know 
sketching and drawing and, and learning how to draw in this garden and wanting to be an artist, you know, I really, I dream of being an artist here. And I'm not sure how old I am there, possibly eight, nine, something like that, I would say. And, and that photo um, was taken by my best friend, my oldest best friend, and unfortunately we lost her a couple of years ago now. So this, um, this isn't the actual picture, obviously, it's a printout, as I say, but yeah, a really special photograph because she wrote on the back of the actual photograph and I still obviously have it in my possession. So yeah. So if you wanted to do the same, I suggest you kind of either rummage through physically and take pictures or scan photographs that you, that you pick of, of physical photographs that you have, or do what I've done today, which is go through my digital files. Um, I've got a lot of photographs on my digital files, and so I just literally skimmed through. I picked a time, if you like, so apart from this one, I picked, you know, from, from the first lockdown, really, and sort of wanted to kind of review and analyse a little bit of my, my, my journey through the last couple of years, because I think, you know, I've mentioned a few times that a lot is coming out for people, you know, now the world is opening up a little bit and it's creating new anxiety and new feelings and emotions um, from, from what we've all been through with our, you know, basically post-traumatic stress. So I think to process that and honour that as part of our process is, you know, for me anyway, really important. But um, yeah, that, that's basically all I've done.
I just got to the next part of my my story if you like it's a little bit like a photo story isn't it and as you can see it's so easy to get your ideas sparked because you've got a very personal connection with your pictures because it's you in them and you've got memories connected with that so that's going to trigger feelings you know how you felt it at that time and space uh, and it's almost a little bit like um, keeping um, a holiday journal or a travel journal isn't it because it's like instead of visiting a place um, and going to a location um, like abroad or on holiday or something like that you're you're traveling back in time so it's a little bit like that it opens out the story if you like chronologically doesn't it so we've acknowledged the weird time and put some feelings down and then I've stepped into my courage and faith with you know I don't know where to go and that's okay acknowledging I feel a little bit weird um, which I did and then so to the next page then and you can see you know I'm not being hugely decorative so you can be as decorative as you want in in this kind of fashion you know you can paint lots of different backgrounds or colors and things like that and you know I, I've done that before you can use stampers and, and you could make your photos a bit more vintage by maybe using some of the um, distress inks that we've used so yeah dip into all sorts of ideas but you know for me I just I just basically want to tell the story today and um, I can go back and decorate things as and when I need to really but um, the, the thing of getting the story down is is my kind of priority for today and I guess the thing I didn't mention really was that I wasn't feeling very good this morning I've been kind of feeling quite grumpy I had quite a full-on day yesterday and um, yeah not feeling totally brilliant so jumping into a gratitude practice you know as we talked about earlier it can be the missing link between feeling really terrible and and feeling good again finding your joy again and I think it, it's looking back isn't it and recognizing when those miracles happened because I didn't know then where I was then the Wendy there where I'm at now and so looking back now it's almost it's almost like healing what was going on here um, with the knowledge and wisdom of, of what I know now and so there's glitter everywhere which is always a good thing <laughs> and I've reached the point now where I'm just on the cusp of letting go of my old studio and I remember this moment so so clearly almost as if it was yesterday really and it was actually when was it? It was just over a year. You can go back actually and watch the whole process. I, I did um, vlog about it in here. I think I'll keep that one for my gratitude page, so I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, this is kind of where I'm at now. So the space where I ended up, my, my private room, which I absolutely love. And having that quiet time in the morning to ponder yeah just really being able to do my thing in my own little quiet space and I can go out there and socialize if I want to or need to I know there's people out there and stuff and there's noises and bustle and stuff so that's really good for my mental health even though I often say oh I just want to stay at home and hibernate and cocoon and stuff and I guess that might be kind of like a wintering thing, time of the year and all sorts of other weird stuff that's gone on. But it's really good for me to have an out there studio, um, mental health wise and inspiration wise as well, because it gets my, my energy juices flowing as well, it gets me out of the house. And uh... right, I've got a couple of things here and I think I'm gonna use these three another day Often when you do things like this, don't you? You have leftover stuff and it's really useful to have that for another day. So I'm going to save those for just pure gratitude pages and I might paint and, and do something different with that. Finding that pre-lockdown feeling again, out in nature, contrasting environments and you know my, my ultimate happy place as well where little little Wendy knew she wanted to be if you like so 
I've got some more places to write. Maybe I'll write a bit smaller on this page because I've got not as much room. And obviously the other brilliant thing about using um, photos is the fact that it's so quick. So we're not sketching and drawing and doodling and stamping and doing all that other stuff. We're really getting the story down really quickly. And when we go back and read and look and review, as we do in our journals, it's really fun, isn't it, to, um, to go back and revisit things, different pages and how we were feeling. That's going to tell me straight away the story of these pages and the fact that I wanted to acknowledge that it really has been a really, fl a really flipping weird time and just flag some of the main parts of the journey for me w within that and you know ultimately finding my happy place at the end of it so and I say quite often don't I do it for the process um, rather than the end result and I, and I feel like that about my paintings as well but definitely about journals it's all for the process and if you've never tried doing anything like this before I think you'd be really surprised about how personal it feels to actually use your own photographs so that you're really connected to your pages you're not pulling you know random pictures off the internet or off Pinterest say to make gratitude pages or, or, or a vision board in, in that sense but it's almost like a gratitude board isn't it because you're actually pulling out things that you're grateful for especially on on these pages I will be as well so that would kind of be a gratitude board and I, I might find some more photographs to go in that as well because I'm sure I can find loads more might might kind of become more of a, a scrapbooking page rather than you know journaling but anything goes in these books it's your book and you can use it any way you want and if you don't like some of the pages you know you can just glue them together so it's really not a problem you know and after after years and years of travel and realizing that you can move to different studios different homes and that kind of thing and remembering that you know you have your happy place with you everywhere you go I think that makes you feel safer more secure and more confident in you know next time where you're just really in this dark tunnel and you just don't know um, and so subconsciously I, I painted those pages black I didn't really think about why but obviously that's why I'm going into this tunnel through this dark space this dark portal that I wrote about um, and then ultimately it became the most peaceful pause and the gift and, and finding the light within the dark, in the dark so um, I guess that's why there's glitter all over the place because it's a good thing so I'm going to sit and journal around this a little bit more and just sort of finish off this part of the story if you like and then the joy of it is there's all that space to keep going and and be excited about because who knows what's going to happen here and I was just randomly thinking about as well I thought I'd turn the camera around and then I can talk to you but you know that film with Kate Winslet it's called The Holiday it's Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet and I really love the film and uh, it's kind of Christmassy as well so it's something that I watched I tend to watch at Christmas as well anyway the line in the film when Kate w Winslet realizes that she's supposed to be the leading lady of her own life that's what it's like to sort of put yourself in your journal and when I kind of use these photo prompts I always find that more stuff comes out than if I hadn't used the photographs if you know what I mean so I really really recommend having a go having a little play with this if you haven't tried it before and you can even paint over your photographs and things like that I've done all sorts of things like that but you can keep it really really simple as well and it's just as purposeful and healing and therapeutic and all that good stuff that journaling does.
Well, I have to say that my mood has lifted completely, dramatically. I don't feel in a grump anymore like I did this morning. Basically, it's worked. It's like a miracle. I really appreciate you keeping me company while I was doing that as well. So I love journaling. Very therapeutic. Thoroughly recommend it. You don't have to do any art in this kind of situation. So it's fun and it has a therapeutic benefit as well. So yeah. So if you like journaling and art journaling, I've got quite a few videos up on YouTube now under the playlist of art journaling, but it's writing journals as well. So you can check those out. And if you really, really like journaling, I've got a tier in my Patreon page, which is five pounds a month called The Pockets. And I always leave all my links down below for my Instagram and everything else. And so you can check all that out if you're interested. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keeping me company. Try to keep your lights shining bright. And if you're having trouble with that, maybe go and visit your favorite tree. And you can let me know how you're doing in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm. Bye for now. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right